Welcome to pattern making class. I'm Annette Julie and today I'm going to show you how to copy your favorite knit top. This top is similar to a t-shirt but it's a bit more styled. On this top we have a scoop neck, a Henley placket, a patch pocket, a styled curved hem, a three-quarter sleeve with a little tab. We also have a center back seam. The sleeve, the body of the garment, front and back, and the pocket, right, both the sleeves, are made out of knit fabric. The tab, the Henley placket, and the neckline are made out of woven. This garment was probably garment dyed, so all the fabric came out the same color. Let's take a look at the pattern making tools. So you don't need all these tools, but if you have them around, they're very handy to use. My favorite tool is the two by 18 inch clear plastic ruler. It's got the grid system, inches on both sides, comes in red, blue, and black clear. This is essential in pattern making, or another ruler if that's all you have. Here we have a French curve, also known as a hip curve. This is from Very Form, uh, Sunray. If you have a curve ruler, very handy. We have one inch steel number 17 dressmaking pin. No plastic or glass heads. So you're not breaking or melting anything at the iron. We have a pattern notcher to notch out little pieces of paper to mark seam allowance and joining seams for patterns. We have a pattern awl, it's like a little mini ice pick to punch holes in a hard pattern and soft pattern. A fabric tape measure. And we have tracing wheels. The one with the white handle is a little bit more dull and the one with the wood handle is extremely sharp. I prefer this one to go through all kinds of garments to get a good copy. But if this is all you have, that's fine. Or if you have neither, we have other things to use. Pencils, pens, and we have a little pattern weight. Also too, some tape. prefer the Scotch Magic Tape because it is removable. Tape dispenser and of course some paper scissors. You don't want to use your fabric scissors. I like a nice lightweight Fisker. Now do you need all of these things? No. And what can we substitute? Well we have a seam ripper back here. We can substitute the seam ripper for the pattern all. We can use the push pins instead of a tracing wheel. You might have a push pin at home. We can use little small cans instead of pattern weights. And out of the tools here, you don't need to have a notcher. We can use your scissor. So it would be great if you had some tape, something to weight things down, a pencil, either a tracing wheel or some pins, an awl or a seam ripper. If you don't have a notcher, you have your paper scissor. And we have some pins and a ruler and possibly a curve ruler. That's the tools we need. If you have a cutting mat, you can work on a cutting mat, but 
What I have here is a large piece of cardboard that I've placed on a table and that works great for going ahead and tracing again so I don't damage the table. So I'm going to go ahead and take my garment and I'm going to turn it right side in. I'm going to undo the little tab here on the sleeve but I do have the buttons buttoned up on the center front and when I take a copy I want the garment to be nice and relaxed and I also want it to be laying nice and flat that's looking really good now we can start like this or we can start by placing a grain line. So I'm going to grab my pen and a ruler and I'm going to place a grain line first on a piece of paper. The other supply you're going to need is a piece of paper. So this happens to be marking paper. It has a grid system on it. Lots of people use this for pattern making, hand pattern making. And this is butcher paper quality. But you could also use eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper from your printer and tape those together. Construction paper, or a roll of tracing paper, or a roll of brown packing paper, any kind of craft paper. So here is my pattern making paper. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half and sort of mark where the middle is. And I've also pre-trimmed how big this piece of paper is. It works perfect to go ahead and copy the front of the garment. I have room all around it if I need it. A couple inches on every side, a couple inches on the top, in the side, in the hem. So it's big enough, I have room, and then now I'm going to go ahead and draw a grain line up the center of the pattern paper. And this is our grain line. This is going to be the center of the front of the shirt. And if we're lucky, it's going to be the center of the back of the shirt too. There we go. There's the center, the center grain line. So we can go ahead and write center, front. You can also write grain line. You can write the date, your name, etc. But we'll start with this. We're also going to end up putting some arrows on this, but this is good for now so you know what's going on. Let's take our knit top. We've already turned it right side in, so we're looking at the wrong side. And we're going to start with copying the front. So I see the seams here. And I'm going to lay it out flat with the seam flat. And it looks like these front and back hems might be matching. So I'm going to pull those so that they're matching. Pull the t-shirt top so it's nice and flat. 
and try to get rid of any wrinkles and work your way up. The flatter of a copy you start with, the better results you're going to have for the end pattern. We're just working on laying it out nice and flat. Working on this little side seam over here. Now at this point, before I continue on with the shoulders, I'm going to go ahead and take my tape measure and I'm going to take a couple measurements. I'm going to grab my pins, I'm going to grab my tape measure, and I'm going to measure from side seam at hem to side seam at hem, find out what that measurement is, divide that in half and place a pin in the center. So it looks like it starts a little bit rolling on the edge there. And make sure that you have this out nice and flat when we're taking the measurement. So it wraps over a little bit there. And I bet you it wraps over a little bit here. It does. So my hem right now is 21 inches, and so the center between the side seams is going to be at 10 and a half. So let me put a pin right there to mark where my grain line is going to be on my fabric of my garment. Now I'm going to work my way up to the waist. This is lying nice and flat, even though I'll still have to adjust it and put it on the grain line. I can go ahead and take a measurement. This looks like this is about 16 and a half inches. So I'm going to find eight and a quarter because that's the center and put a pin. And usually I do this three to four times. I'll do it between the side seam at the hem, between the side seam waist here, and then now we're progressing up to the armhole. Let's go ahead, make it nice and flat at the side seam armhole. That looks good. And let's take this measurement here. And I'm taking it right where the seam allowance ends. So right where the fabric begins and the seam allowance ends. And I'm about 19 inches and look. That's right where it should be. They put the placket in the right place. Nine and a half. Good. I just like to check those things. You never know. The placket could be over to either side, but I've been wearing it. It's my favorite. Just wanted to check to make sure it's perfect. Now let's do one more right between the neckline and the shoulders. Seven and a half, and look, that correlates with the center back seam. Good. We've got four pins. Now, those pins are our grain line on the garment, and we want to line up the grain line on the piece of paper here, the top and the bottom, uh, the, yeah, the top and the bottom, and line those up. So that when we make our copy, it's on grain and the pattern is perfect. So we're going to start like that. And we're going to lay down our garment flat again. This time matching grain line from garment to grain line of paper. And I don't care how the sleeve looks right now, I want to collapse it. I'm not trying to straighten the sleeve out when I'm making the front copy. Look, that pin is just lined up perfect, so that's making me feel good. 
So right now I could go ahead and put some push pins in here to hold everything in place. Or I could use some pattern weights or my little cans of tuna. I can use a tape dispenser. I can use a book. There's lots of things to hold this down while we're working with it. Well, this looks really good. We're going to start with the tracing wheel. I like that real sharp one. Let's start by tracing off the side seams and you're going to trace right on the stitch line on this garment since it's a knit and that's what we're learning how to do today. We have one quarter of an inch seam allowance that's left with the overlock. It started as three eighths, an eighth got trim, trimmed off, and now we have a quarter inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace off with this tracing wheel right on the edge of where the overlock stops and the rest of the garment starts. And I'm taking the tracing wheel sort of holding the fabric down as I go along, trying not to distort things. Here I've come to the end, the fabric ran, you know, is, is gone, so I'm just going right next to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and go on the armhole here, and if I don't have enough uh, pattern weights or pins, I can move things around. I'm going to, again, go on the stitch line that is the end of the overlock. You have like fabric that's flopping around and I'm on the stitch line that's closest to where that sleeve and the, and the armhole started. So there's the armhole. Look, there's the side seam and we can see here that this makes a crisscross. We want that. We wanna see all the little holes for the whole side seam and the armhole. Now we're gonna do 